boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, guys. Oh boy. I have been so pumped to film this one ever since I read the September monthly report about mm, six hours ago. Seriously, some really cool stuff was talked about in this monthly report that was worked on in Star Citizen in September. And if you'd like to hear me talk more candidly about it, make sure to jump over to Twitch and check me out. I should be streaming right after this video goes live. For now, let's talk tech. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Also a big shout out to my newest top tier supporter and first YouTube channel member, Renzo B. Starting off with AI, in addition to the normal AI ammo retrieval and handling work we've been seeing over the last few months, the team also developed some surrendering animations. These fall in line with expected gameplay for 3.12, where we'll be able to force players and NPCs to surrender while bounty hunting or arresting them. Back in the beginning of September, this item was delayed to allow for further development. I am Star Citizen NPC. But maybe not for much longer. We've seen the NPC standing on chair problem pop up multiple times only to be squashed, only to pop up again, only to be squashed, only to pop up again, it's a cycle. But we've received some additional info as to why NPCs stand on usables and what might fix it currently and in the future. Essentially the problem was caused by NPCs being attached to objects which were streamed out and then back in again by object container streaming. And when a player approached and it was reloaded, the actual correct reattachment would never process. Or in cases other than chairs, certain characters would stream in before the character in question who was meant to use the item, and would steal that item, leaving nothing for the designated character to use. Now in order to solve this problem, we get to read, the long-term plan is to make extensive use of services to populate the environment and simulate areas when players are not around. This means a lot of these issues will become irrelevant due to the systems being used in slightly different ways. Wait a second. Did I just hear a low-key mention of the upcoming quantum system? Nice. In terms of ships, the AI team worked on capital ship combat behavior, specifically on turret management. In summary, a gunner AI will be able to determine if energy weapons are needed for shields versus ballistic weapons against armor. AI are also gaining the ability to intercept missiles so that all AI turret gunners in smaller turrets that can move to track fast targets will target missiles that are a threat to friendlies. I'm getting some Expanse vibes here. Finally, each turret gunner determines their target based on the size of their turret. These are some pretty smart AI. Smart guys, if you will. The modular environment art team in September mostly worked on things that we already know about. Ship to station docking saw a lot of work, along with gas cloud implementation into the game, refinery decks, and upcoming events, which I'm sure at least one of will be mentioned on Saturday, October 10th. The landing zone team moved most of the cloud city Orison into the gray box phase, preparing it for launch next year. The Organics team continued work on the final pyro planets and moons, as well as implementation of the new planetary shaders and textures. We've also received confirmation that these are prerequisites for planetary elemental accumulation similar to what I had pointed out at last year's CitizenCon. Quote unquote cold floor shader effects. It's also something that I've heard other streamers talk about wanting a little bit recently. Expect the first implementation of this in December. As for ships, guys. It's happening. The Crusader Mercury Star Runner is at the doorstep of the final art phase and is expected to reach the release prep stage this month. Expect to see 10,000 of these ships flying around in November. The Crusader Hercules also saw some good work getting certain parts of the ship into the final art complete stage. And the Asperia Talon is also really close to release, completing its final art stage as well. 
I'm wondering where the teams working on these three ships will go next. You guys may remember when we first got weapon attachments, there were like three, maybe four, and then that expanded. Well, my friends, the system is due to expand again soon. Work began on a new set that includes scopes, barrels, and underbarrel attachments, and two new weapons from Bering and Gemini, my two favorite weapon manufacturers, made some good progress. On that back end, though, it was generally the quarterly maintenance that you would expect. For all those, ah, fix all the bugs, commenters, you'll be happy to hear that a number of issues that were plaguing 3.10 have been remedied. Things like performance issues, network connectivity issues, and memory leaks. The teased new armor set that we've been hearing about saw plenty of work done in September and is due for release in December. It is especially challenging to implement due to changing geometry in the variants. Now, many believe this could be the Titan suit, a large combat exoskeleton. And, well, let's be real, it is due for completion for Squadron 42 this quarter as well. So I'm inclined to agree, but I'm always open to other possibilities. In other character news, we are finally seeing the mention of new, more career-focused utilitarian and specialized armors making it into the game that we had heard about at last year's CitizenCon. We are particularly excited to finally be adding more gameplay armors to the PU, as Design will now be delivering armor design documents to us at regular intervals. Among others, we have started concepting a series of bounty hunting and tracking-focused armors. You can expect to see these in 2021. I'm really happy to see some armors with special functions that will help you with your desired occupations coming in the next year. This, once again, points towards the shift in development that I mentioned from tools and tech to gameplay and experience, and also leads me to believe that they probably are seriously thinking about armor components at this point in time. Finally, the character team supported some upcoming events like the Crusader Mercury Star Runner launch. Now tell me this, why would a ship launch need the support of a character team? Upcoming in-game ship launch, anybody? Okay guys, I'm gonna do my best with this one and tell you what I do understand. As for everything else, stay tuned to Space Tomato, make sure to subscribe and uh, hit that bell icon because I'm planning on having a more technically inclined citizen uh, come on to the show here on YouTube and we're going to live stream a little discussion, a candid talk about the engineering section so that we can explain it better for you guys. Now, Cloud Tech, the holy grail for eye candy and video games, impressive clouds. In September, Along with Atmosphere and the Unified Ray Marcher, Planetary Cloud Tech, which we don't really know much about, saw progress. It can now properly interact with the atmosphere it is located within in terms of lighting and transmittance. From the sounds of it, Atmospheric Cloud Tech is actually making pretty good progress, but CIG is holding it close to the chest. As I always say, monthly reports are the place to be to know what's really going on. The lighting model for Atmospherics is also seeing a ton of work, which is a part of the game that has always been great but sees a small amount of nuisance-filled bugs that I'd like to see taken care of. Sounds like CIG is on top of that though. Speaking of atmospheres, the engineering team was able to add the ability to add an ozone layer to Earth-like planet atmospheres along with some other witchcraft additions such as the ability to create twilight casting and project items into the planet's penumbra region. Ooh. Features had a big month, you guys. Honestly, I feel a little validated and overall pretty excited about what I saw in this section. First, the Mission Manager app is seeing a redesign using building blocks. That means it's going to be smooth, dynamic, and overall more delightful to use. So far, CIG has proven themselves pretty good at UI when using the building block system, so I'm interested in seeing what they do here. And I'll be making a detailed video on the app itself once we get a little more information and footage. In addition, more work has been put into the reputation system, which is huge. 
The reputation system is a very big part of the game and is incredibly important. If you haven't seen my recent video where I talk a little bit about it, make sure to check it out in this corner up here or down in the video description. And I'll have more news regarding that system for you guys in the coming months. While ship to ship docking continued development last month, ship to station docking has been completed for the initial implementation. Large ships can now contact the station, request a port, and connect with that port to offload occupants and materials. While I'm not sure if it'll be in gameplay or core tech, I think we can expect to see docking make its way back onto the 3.12 roadmap very soon, which could mean larger ships will finally be able to land and be spawned at space stations as well. Finally, the features team supported the ongoing UI work on the mining UI refresh. While mining is the deepest and most polished career game loop in the game right now, there are still plenty of things CIG wants to do to make it one of the best experiences in gaming. A clean UI refresh is one of those things. The graphics team put work into the Gen 12 renderer last month, an incredibly important part of creating a more pleasant end user experience and improving the accessibility of the game. They also worked on iridescent effects which can be applied to ships and armor in the future. This will be good for adding variety and personality to all of your objects in game. The level design team of course continued work on the cargo and refinery station attachments, the first space station expansions after the military decks, and worked on space station interiors as well. They also planned ahead for further iterations on space stations in the future. The teams also completed the first version of graphic panels that will help with things such as the elevator button update coming in a future patch. While some joke about this update, a finalized and unified method of traversing transportation options such as elevators but also trams and trains is incredibly important to the final game. Maybe this will even help with things like NPC driven personal transport ships. Besides the new cargo decks, the lighting team looked into alternative lighting arrangements for space stations, such as low power and emergency states. Now, keep in mind, just a couple months ago, we also heard about EVA access and specific missions centered around space stations. Could there be scenarios in which players will be meant to restore power to sabotage stations, like the current ECN missions? Keep an eye on this line of thought, I think there could be something more here. Lighting also put some work into the upcoming cloud city of Orison, as well as another pass on Lorville adding some more life to the area. The narrative team tasks are always so interesting to me. In September, Narrative supported the creation of not only new future locations, but also the history, lore, characters, dialogue, and possible mission storylines that could come with those future locations. There are a few places this could refer to. Ruined Station in Pyro, Orison at Crusader, a checkpoint at the Aaron Halo Belt, or another location in Pyro. Or, looking way out there, a potential third star system that CIG is already thinking about. They also, of course, supported the Imperator elections coming up in October. Make sure to vote for the candidate you think we need, as they will affect the game for years and years to come. Check out the resources linked in the video description for more info, as well as my friend Astropub who does a fantastic job of covering the lore of Star Citizen. The props team had one major task last month, and that was developing the push and pull trolley system that I mentioned recently in regards to the new cargo gameplay we have coming up. This system will allow players to manipulate trolleys which will allow the transportation of more goods at a time. Expect to see the implementation of these features in December, I'd guess.
The tech team continued to work on the in-house facial creation rig and tool suite, preceding the push to overhaul the entire character creation system. What we have now was a decent tier 1, but with building blocks enabled and the game beginning to mature, it's time for a proper character creator. And I think CIG agrees. An as yet announced ship was once again focused on and developed further in September. This could be any number of suspected ships coming in the near future. A mid-sized refinery ship coming from Consolidated Outland, a Xeon cargo transportation ship, or even an RSI gunboat. Stay tuned for more information. The tech team also prepared for upcoming improvements to radar, ping, and scanning, with the aim being to enrich the experience of discovering and gathering detailed information of entities while traveling on foot or in ships. Hold on a second. Radar, ping, and scanning improvements to enrich the discovery and gathering of detailed information. Proper waypoint marking and exploration gameplay at a very basic level will be implemented into the PU within the next year. Huh. That sounds crazy. Now, clearly this doesn't mean that I was right, yet. But discovering and gathering information can only mean that we're headed towards transferring that information or maybe, I don't know, exploration gameplay. I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but uh, stay tuned to see if I was on the money. The UI team worked on some good stuff this past month as well. The new upcoming missile operator UI and the refinery kiosk UI in particular. Keep in mind folks, the cargo decks were never advertised to have gameplay in the initial implementation, but the refinery decks clearly are planned to have some sort of gameplay involved. So I, I don't, I don't want to hear none of that, oh well it's just a location, oh it's like cargo decks. Guys, I, this is the UI section, right? And finally, with VFX, we saw continued work on fire hazards, as well as some VFX work on our newest ships and weapons. This monthly report really got me. It had it all. Reminders of near and long-term features in development, confirmation of things we'll see in 3.12, and some mysterious points to drive some speculation. Now, particularly for me, it was the reputation system and the new scanning improvements that really stood out to me. But what got you excited? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And remember to subscribe to not only hear my new upcoming YouTube live streams that will talk a little bit more in depth about the engineering section, but also just to hang around and hear the awesome information and new speculation coming out about Star Citizen and other sci-fi games. You can also support me by becoming a channel member here on YouTube or joining me on Patreon. Those people get exclusive cinematics and stuff, so... Also, make sure to head over to Twitch and play, chat, or just hang out with me in the community. This week, we're gonna try and put together a big mining operation with rocks, freelancers, and security ships, so come check it out. And finally, get into my giveaway hosted by Gleam. Details in the video description below where you can win a Origin 135C at the end of the month. Thank you guys for hanging out and watching this video. I hope you got a lot of new information that you can think about. And remember to continue to read the monthly reports, not the roadmap. <laughs> oh, also, have a nice day. Bye.